Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Zeke Week. We're going to discuss um, the usage of an IT inventory um, in your, your Zeke enterprise, your Zeke platform. So I have an IT inventory, now what? Um, my name's Nick Turley. I'm a managing director of IT architecture at uh, Brigham Young University. Um, and as you heard earlier on the presentation, I've also uh, recently joined the Zeke leadership team. So I'm uh, really uh, excited about that. Um, this is a topic that's uh, particularly uh, close to my heart. Um, and it's we're, we're going to discuss context uh, in terms of your security events and the value that you can get out of enriching your data uh, in, in Zeek. Um, I'm a huge fan of Zeek, um, obviously, I'm, I'm here presenting, but I've been using, I've been using uh, Zeek and, and, and previously Bro uh, for, I don't know, somewhere around 10 years uh, in different projects. I've, I've used it in small projects. I've used it in, in large university and enterprise settings, but I really love um, the customization that uh, you can get out of, of Zeek. Some of the things that we have uh, been able to do um, in my past uh, jobs and at my current job at, at Brigham Young University. Um, we've been able to write uh, a lot of Zeek scripts and, and, and write a lot of modules that customize how we use Zeek in our environment. Some of these, some of the examples of the customization that we've done have been system misconfigurations, looking for things like how is a how is a web server responding or how is a system responding? What types of error codes are, are, is it producing? What's the payload that it's returning to the user to detect those errors? We have a central authentication service uh, at our university. We've we've written Zeek scripts to monitor how users are logging in to systems, uh, their behavior after they log in and what they're doing. Uh, we've written scripts to monitor content management systems. How, again, how users are logging in, what modules are getting installed, um, what is their activity on those systems. Site defacements, probably something that we all um, especially in a university setting, we've all uh, dealt with it at, at some point. We use Zeek to, to look for uh, evidence of any site defacements. Uh, sensitive data exposure, one of my favorite ones. Um, we've, we've written some scripts to look for sensitive data, such as social security numbers, um, and, and seeing how that data is, is traversing the network and what systems it's going to and being stored on. We do a lot of file carving and payload uh, analysis uh, using some custom scripts that we've written. We've written some custom SMB and SIF scripts. Uh, when, when the WannaCry outbreak occurred uh, a couple years ago, uh, within about a half hour, we were able to whip up a quick uh, Zeek script to look for WannaCry behavior and, 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 and uh, stop a, a potential um, ransomware outbreak at our campus. But one of the most important areas of Zeek that I that I really like is, uh, and what we're going to talk about today is is the input um, the input framework. The input framework um, is one of the exciting areas of of, of Zeek capability um, that I think is not used a lot. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of Zeek uh, implementations at different universities and different companies, and scripts are you know custom scripts are used and different things, but I haven't seen a lot of usage of the the input framework. Uh, you see the Intel framework being used, but not a lot of usage of the input framework. The input framework in Zeek is really fantastic because you can take external data, external data meaning data outside of Zeek um, that is in your environment and ingest this into your Zeek system and provide context uh, into your, uh, your Zeek events, your notice alerts, um, any log that gets produced by Zeek, you can enrich those, uh, those, those, those events. And so we're gonna talk about the input framework and how we use that to enrich our, um, our events. And one of the most important things I like to talk about is context, context, context. So there's, there's a lot of opinions about what makes security alerts um, and events relevant uh, to your environment. Um, you, 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 know, you may have a security operations center or you may have a small team of security analysts. You may have one guy. You may not have any guys. You may, you may have your platform or your network team wear that security hat. But the problem is, is Zeek is producing a tremendous amount of data, a tremendous amount of valuable data but how do you apply your institutional context to that? How do you know how to prioritize uh, your alerts? You know, Zeke can alert you to, hey, uh, this particular IP um, is suffering from a SQL injection attack or is a victim of a SQL injection attack. Um, you know, these particular hosts are using RC4 uh, encryption for Kerberos tickets. Um, but then you sit back and you go, great, but if I've got a large enterprise, what are those systems actually doing? What's their responsibility in the enterprise? 
what's what's their data classification, uh, what applications and services do they support um, for for your for your environment. So in, in my experience um, in, in in working in cybersecurity for a while now, context is the most important thing you can probably do to enrich your your systems. Um, you know, there's a lot of commercial uh, security solutions that that replicate uh, you know what what Zeek does in some ways, um, but I, I haven't really seen in my career what, you know a, a platform that allows you to ingest data like this and have basically complete control over how those uh, events are are enriched. So let's go through a couple of use cases that that uh, you can you can kind of think through, and, and and some things that you can actually do with Zeek using Input Framework. So for example, account tracking. What if you wanted to monitor accounts, contractors, vendors, and behavior on your network? You can feed in that data to Zeek. What about your data classifications? Where is your PII stored? Social security numbers, medical records, those kinds of things. You can get Zeek to detect the presence of PII and report those systems if they're not included in your inventory, right? Okay, you've got a new highly confidential system that needs to be recorded in the inventory and dealt with. IR ticket resolution. You have Zeek alerts coming in, but have has a security analyst or somebody else already taken advantage of that? You can feed your IR data to Zeek and have Zeek and, and allow Zeek to have some context on, on the status of tickets. Environment context, production, test, and dev. You can have this labeled in your Zeek log so you know what production and dev systems are involved um, in, the, in the connection logs. Inventory control, for example, looking for the presence of new Macs, Mac addresses, which have been reported on the network. So consider your PCI uh, environments or things like that where you have to monitor that kind of thing. You can feed Zeek your known Macs and have Zeek then report to you any Macs, uh, Mac addresses that it sees that aren't part of that, uh, that inventory. Uh, you can do uh, prioritization of SQL injection attacks. It's one thing to know that you've got a web application getting SQL injects. It's another thing to know, hey, it's, it's got a highly confidential system. Uh, identification of subnets and cleaning up your DNS and IPAM metadata. Uh, knowing if this, the IP you're looking at is an actual VM or a physical machine, active versus an active virtual machines on the network. Tracking usage of domain administrator and root accounts or service accounts across the network. If you're looking at, for example, Kerberos logs, do you know from Kerberos logs um, who your domain administrators are, who are your elevated users. You can tag those Kerberos logs to go, this is a domain administrator. And zone protections, you can have Zeek help you understand uh, the traffic layout that's occurring. Are your zone protections working? Um, you know, do you, have, oh, do you have an anonymous or guest wireless system accessing a sensitive system that shouldn't be, shouldn't be accessed? So real quick, we're gonna go through uh, some examples of what this, what this looks like. On the left side, you see a typical con log. And on the right side, you see a typical HTTP log. Um, nothing, nothing, if, you're, if you're familiar with Zeek, these logs should be very familiar to you. Provides a ton of information, a ton of really valuable information to, to help you with your threat hunting. Um, but what we don't have here, again, is context. We're looking at this web server. We know it's a web server. We know it was a successful connection. But what is this web server? So what we can do with the input framework is we can write some, some actually relatively simple code to bring in data from our inventory system or whatever it is and label our Zeek logs with this new information. So now if you look at the boxes in the red here, now we have a bunch of new really valuable information. We know that this web server contains social security numbers, contains medical imaging. It's in our service catalog. It's part of our patient records or EMR system in our service catalog. We have an inv.class, basically our data classification. It's part of the HIPAA classification. It's, it's inventoried in our CMDB and it's a highly confidential system. On the right hand side, same thing. Now we're adding some additional information. Not only do we have the data classifications, but now we're federating or bringing in information from our IPAM or our DNS system. So you can see IPAM.response and IPAM.orig. Now we know, okay, this is VLAN 605 or this is VLAN 201, it's a highly confidential subnet or it's a guest wireless. So in this case, a guest wireless vendor subnet is accessing a highly confidential subnet. Maybe something you don't want to, to be happening. Maybe you've got an ACL that's out of whack and this, this, this type of connection shouldn't be happening. But right here, I've got immediate context for our security analysts using both the, the out of the box Zeek data and this context from our environment, we know exactly what the system is and we know how to prioritize uh, this, particular, this particular alert. Another example where we enrich the notice log. 
So in this particular case, we've written a Zeek script that looks for the presence of errors that are returned to the user. So for example, they get a 500 error code, but the payload of that site says you have an error in your SQL syntax near line whatever, right? And our notice log is HTTP payload of website contains errors. As a security analyst right then and there, I look at that going, that should not be happening. I can bet you that application has a SQL injection vulnerability. But if we add in the additional context now, we know where the traffic's coming from. It's coming from our guest wireless network. We know the responding server. In this case, the system likely uh, vulnerable to SQL injection um, is a highly confidential system. It's part of our student information system coming from our, from our service catalog. And then you'll see a subgroup or a support group. We've actually included, well, this is part of the humanities department. You contact Todd Jensen for something like this, right? Right then and there in one shot, in one event, you know, we've probably got a SQL injection vulnerability. We've got a sensitive system that needs to be looked at. We know who to contact. We know what to do. You've got immediate prioritization right there. Another example of notice log, or excuse me, software log. Software log is really powerful in Zeek. It can enumerate versions and, and the types of applications that are running on the system. You can marry that up with events in your notice log. And in this particular example, we wrote a script looking for vulnerable PHP web applications using data that's produced out of the software log. So we know that PHP 5.3.3 is really out of date. But what we have here is additional context, knowing that we've got a vulnerable PHP application on a highly confidential system, part of our learning management system. Probably not something we want to sit on, probably something we want to get a ticket created for and take action on. You'll also notice in the yellow here on the right side, we have IR.ID and IR.status. We bring in information from our ticketing, our IR ticketing system, and feed this back in. So now for this particular notice, the security analyst goes, oh, this has already been handled. It's part of ticket 2438 and the ticket status is still open. So now the analysts can go look at other uh, alerts coming in through the notice log. They don't have to waste time on this one. They know it's already being, uh, already being taken care of. So some of the sample correlation sources, you can look at, um, I, I gave a presentation to Educause in 2019 about how BYU is building a, a microservice and is an, an event-driven architecture around this. So I won't go into too much detail, but what we've basically done here is we've written microservices that allow us to basically collect this information from all of these different data sources, our CMDB inventory system or our DNS IPAM, cloud accounts or identity or uh, authorization management. For example, this could be Active Directory. And we, we basically ETL that information and put it in such a way that we can input that or, or, or bring that up to the Zeek input framework uh, to be ingested. Uh, and then we write some scripts, some Zeek, some Zeek scripts to utilize that data and start enriching the necessary logs. In most cases, we enrich the con log, but in other cases, we enrich the notice log and HTTP log because it makes more sense at that point. So for example, if we wanted to bring in data from Active Directory to say, give me a list of all of our domain administrators or enterprise admins, we feed that into Zeek and then we enrich the Kerberos log. And now the Kerberos log tells you, here's all your domain admins on the network and what their behavior, um, what their behavior is. But this is basically it. I mean, Zeek input takes in uh, some tab delimited files and pretty easy files to generate. The hard part for you is identifying in your environment what context or what federated information do you want to bring in an ETL uh, to be ingested by, by Zeek? So consider the sources of information, the knowledge centers that you have in your environment that would really um, help enrich um, your, your Zeek data. Here's an example here. This is actually, we use Humio, and this is based off Corelight data, but Zeek data would be almost exactly the same. We're using Humio. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our connection logs for any servers responding with 80 where they've been identified as a service of HTTP and a successful connection. Okay, basically we're looking for web servers, okay? We wrote a quick query in Humio that just renamed some fields, but based off the labels that you saw in some of the earlier slides, it just makes them more human readable for query. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the data classification of public. And we're gonna group by our connection state, detected service, support group, and data classification. And now here you see our OIT technology support, Humanities and Marriott School of Business are running web services with public information, okay? Now we can pivot that over and look for confidential information. Now, again, 
to be clear, we're not looking inside the data payload. We're just saying, look, from our inventory, we know that this server contains confidential information. Now it may have lots of different services on it, whatnot, but we at least know when the alerts start coming in, what we're dealing with. But it makes it really nice to be able to just quickly pivot and do some threat hunting and go, show me all SQL injections that have occurred in the last 24 hours against highly confidential systems. You can start to make your queries, uh, uh, implement your queries with that type of, that type of uh, context. So from a coding standpoint, this is really pretty easy to do. And, and there's uh, at, the end of this, at the end of the presentation here, there's a link um, that I'll provide to you to Zeke's input framework documentation. It's the best documentation. Just go look at that documentation. But I'll give you some code examples here. We're going to do a Zeke init. And really, this is all it is. We do an input add table and we specify the source of our Intel file. Now, in this case, it's .intel. doesn't matter. It just needs to be a tab delimited um, uh, file. We name what the, what the table is going to be. We provide the index value. We provide the additional values, the columns. I'll show you in the next slide where this data is going to be stored, the destination. In this case, it's INV underscore table. And we want to reread this file when this file is, is updated. So that as your inventory or that uh, when your ETLs are running and this data is getting updated, Zeke will reread these files and bring in the new information. So here we set up our, our index. We set up our values to bring those in. And then we set up our table. I will, I will be uh, posting a GitHub uh, repository in the Slack channel later with this information. So I'm going to kind of go through this really quick. We set up our, our fields that we're going to put in our connection log, and then we redefine our con info. In the GitHub, I'll have more documentation on how this looks. Once we have the kind of the scaffolding set up, that's it. And then you just define some events that you want to, that you want to use to enrich your logs. In this case, we're using connection state remove. And we're adding our labels, our service catalog, and our data classification to that log. And that's the example that you saw uh, in, in the previous, um, previous slides. So um, the input framework is really powerful. I would recommend you spend some time looking at Zeke's documentation on uh, the input framework and, and really learning how to use it. You'll probably find a ton of value. You'll probably find new ways to think about, oh, now we have a new way to prioritize uh, what we're going to do and how this is, how this is going to work. So links down there at the bottom. Uh, again, I'm Nick Turley. There's my contact information. You can find me on LinkedIn and, and Twitter. I'm also on IRC often uh, in, the, in the Zeke channel. Uh, and I'm also on the, uh, the Zeke Slack uh, uh, pretty often. So again, here's a great ways to stay connected to Zeke. And thank you uh, very much.